what about this surgery for 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years? Well, it turns out there's no such thing as the mini gastric bypass. We made up that name because the scientific name for the surgery is kind of a tongue twister. The real name for the surgery is a <coughs> Bill Roth II loop gastrojejunostomy gastric bypass. We thought that'd be kind of challenging to put on the website. <laughs> All right, but let me give you a little bit more history and some information because Bill Roth is the name of the guy who actually invented this type of surgery. Bill Roth, and it's a Bill Roth II because he invented a Bill Roth I before he invented this one. And he invented it in 1895. In other words, that's before doctors actually wore gloves or masks. It is after they developed anesthesia. But that's when doctors wore black coats so that when they went from patient to patient, they could do this. Um, this music is because our staff is supposed to now get up and go actually and go around and see patients because a lot of them just stay in their office. What? Not us. Not our staff, right. Right, hospital staff. We have to get up and dance around. Okay, so anyways. Um, so the Bill Roth surgery has been around for well over 100 years. Of all the surgeries that we do in, on patients in the abdomen, this one we know more about than anything. And so we know over 100 years of follow-up of people with this kind of surgery long-term. And the answer is there are some risks to it long-term. The number one long-term risk is ulcers or gastritis or an upset stomach. It's also called marginal ulcers. And we've known that for 100 years. And so that's why you may remember the sections in the manual where we say, no alcohol, no aspirin, eat a healthy diet, eat your yogurt to get the good bacteria, those kind of things. Because we know about this surgery for over 100 years. Many of my patients have friends or family that have had this surgery for what it was initially invented for, which is the treatment of ulcers. It used to be one of the third or fourth most common surgeries done in the world because ulcers were really common before they invented the purple pill. Prilosec, cimetidine, Tagamet, all those drugs. So up until the <clears throat> 60s and 70s, a very common problem in the United States and around the world was ulcers, with bleeding ulcers and perforated ulcers and things like that. And then that problem went away. We developed a drug for it. Zantac, Tagamet, Prilosec, Losec in Canada, all those drugs have basically uh, decreased and almost eliminated the need for ulcer operations. Still a few, but rare. So we know about this surgery and the long-term results of the surgery as well as we know about anything done in the abdomen of human beings. And we know that it's pretty good, not perfect, but pretty good. Large-scale studies in Finland. Finland is a socialized country, so they have socialized medicine. They know about every single person and they went into their computer database and looked at everybody who had a Bill Roth II. They found thousands of people and followed them all till death. And they found that they basically had about the same survival as people who didn't have a Bill Roth II. They had slightly lower heart attack rates and slightly higher hip fracture rates because you could get some osteoporosis and that's why we recommend the extra Tums and vitamin D for our patients. So we know about the Bill Roth II as much as we know about anything in the world. And we abbreviated our thing and called it a mini gastric bypass because we thought a Bill Roth to loop gastrojejunostomy gastric bypass was kind of a, a bit much.